Thank you for joining us as we celebrate children's literature. We also wish to acknowledge the commencement of the 47th Battle of the Book season. Welcome BOB participants, coaches, and family members, as well as the general public. Our guest today is Catherine Arden, the best-selling author of the Small Spaces Quartet. Her book, Small Spaces, was featured on last year's Battle of the Books list and won our popular vote for favorite book. The sequel, Dead Voices, was featured on this year's list and was also incredibly popular, finishing in second place out of 60 titles. The third book in her series, Dark Waters, is scheduled for release this summer. We are so glad and honored to have Ms. Arden here this evening. Please use the Q&A function to ask any questions for Ms. Arden. She will answer those at the end of her presentation. Thank you. Hi everyone, I am so excited with you tonight. Um, thank you for having me. I hope everyone's doing well um, wherever you are at home. Um, so tonight I wanna to talk to you about writing scary books, which is what I do for, for kids. Um, I love scary books, I've always loved scary books and I am fortunate enough to be able to write them. So what do you need to write a scary book? couple of things, right? Need, for any book, you need a plot, you need characters. Um, but for a scary book, the most important thing for me is asking myself, what scares you? What is it that scares you the most? And I ask myself this every time before every scary book. And for my first book, Small Spaces, um, which, is, which is written, let's see, two or three years ago now, I started with Fog. You think, what? Fog's not scary, but hear me out. So one day, it's a true story, one day I was driving on a bus um, going from my hometown, Burlington, Vermont, to Boston, Massachusetts. And I'm on this bus and this huge, huge fog comes down over the road. It's the thickest fog I've ever seen. It's, it's so dense that all you can see is the headlights kind of being thrown back in your eyes. Um, as I'm sitting there on this bus, just watching the fog go by, I start thinking, wow, what if our bus broke down right now? What if we just stopped right here in the middle of the street? What if something came out of the fog to get us? And then I asked myself, okay, what would be the, what would be the worst thing for me to come jumping out of that fog? Now, at the same time, at the same time, um, as I was going to Boston, it was autumn in my home state of Vermont. And one thing that people love to do in Vermont in the autumn is to build and put out scarecrows. So many towns have scarecrow contests. My town has a scarecrow contest and people will put out these super, super elaborate scarecrows. They wear secondhand clothes, they wear secondhand jewelry, they have pumpkin heads or burlap sack heads. Um, they sometimes have trowels for hands or hands stuffed with straw. And if you go out at night or right at sunrise or at sunset, you could almost swear the scarecrows are moving. Um, I have never liked scarecrows. They, they're like clowns made of vegetables for me. Um, and so I'm sitting there on this bus and I'm thinking, wow, what if a bunch of scarecrows just came out of the woods to grab me? That would be terrible. Um, and since I'm a writer, I took the idea, wrote it down, went on to Boston, saw my friend and came home. But I had some free time. That was, I just finished my second novel um, at the time, I also write books for grownups, um, and I was waiting um, for some notes back from my editor, the person who reads my books at my publishing house. Um, and so I'm like, wow, what if I play with this idea about scary, evil scarecrows? Cool, that'd be fun. So I sit down, um, I sit down, and I always write my first drafts by hand. Um, not every author does this, but I really like how, how freeing it can be to write um, a draft with just a pen and a notebook in your mind and no, no computer, no internet. Um, it's much less distracting, at least for me. So I sat down with a legal pad and black pen and I started playing with this idea of evil scarecrows. Now I don't often or almost ever start a book with a plot in mind. Um, I usually start with one thing um, and that one thing could be an event, an idea, a character, a setting. Um, but one thing usually gets me started in this case, it was the idea of scarecrow. So I'm like, wow, okay, 
what if the bus did break down and the scarecrow showed up? So I wrote that scene, um, the scene of a broken down bus and evil scarecrows. And I, and I realized, wow, who would be the most likely people to be on a bus breaking down? And for me, the answer was kids. Um, because of course, at least in Vermont, um, kids ride the bus to school, they ride the bus home, they ride the bus on field trips, often to farms. Um, and so this book, which I originally saw as a book for grownups, like my other two books, I decided to make a book for children. And so I, I wrote this scene um, from a kid's perspective. There's a bus, it breaks down, um, scarecrows come, all is lost, or is it? And then I read it and I'm like, wow, I need to build a story out around this moment. In small spaces, my first novel, um, which is the book about the evil scarecrows, um, is funny because it's a book that I wrote from the middle out. Um, it just goes to show, this is important for anybody who wants to be a writer who likes writing, there is no right way to write a book. There are so many ways to write a book. Um, oftentimes, the way you write the book changes from book to book. So in the case of Small Spaces, the book started in the middle with the scene where a bus breaks down. Um, and in the scene, the main character, Ollie, is warned about the evil scarecrows coming and gets off the bus in time and runs and hides in the woods. And that um, kind of became my jumping off point because I had to figure out why Ollie would leave the bus. Why would she be so scared about scarecrows, which are kind of a, an, a, a strange and, and hard to imagine threat, um, that she would leave and go into the woods. Um, and then, and then, and then, um, after she does, how do I get her out again? Um, a lot of times, once you have your original idea for a book, um, you keep moving forward with questions, with questions like why and how and who. Um, so with small spaces, I wrote the middle first and I wrote from the middle to the end. Um, and that was fun because I packed in everything that I find scary about Vermont in the fall. And there's tons of things. Um, there are ghosts and there were ghosts. Um, there were graveyards. One cool thing about Vermont is that the state is so old and has been, has been settled for a long time is that you find graves everywhere. Because back in the day, people just built homesteads um, in the mountains and they would often, if somebody died, just bury them where they lived. And so the homesteads are long gone, um, but the graves are still there. And so in small spaces, Ollie finds like a scary graveyard just in the middle of the woods. Um, let's see, ghosts, graveyards. Um, and the last thing was corn mazes, um, which kind of worked, right? Because scarecrows, um, where do you find scarecrows? In corn. Um, and it's another thing from, from my life. I feel like a lot of writing comes from your own experiences, right? Um, and in the case of, of um, corn mazes, there was one near my house when I was writing small spaces and it wasn't just a normal corn maze where you where you jump into the corn and run to the middle it was a haunted corn maze and a haunted corn maze is much 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 creepier than a regular corn maze um because you could only run it at night and um and as you were running it you had to run by flashlight and um people would jump out of the out of the corn holding chainsaws and scream at you um, and it was absolutely terrifying. And I wanted to, um, to recreate the horror of corn mazes um, in, in my book. So, so a lot of small spaces was just, what do I find scary? Let me put it in, let me put it in, let me put it in. Um, and for the, so that was the beginning, was just writing the, the scary things, one, two, three, four, five. But then I had to write the beginning of the book. And it's funny because I wrote the beginning of the book last. Um, the beginning of the book is how you get the main character, her name's Olivia, um, to the middle where her bus breaks down. Um, and it was hard because if you think about it, and it's important to think about why your characters do something, the way to make the book work was that I had to have the main character jump off the bus and run into the woods, right? But the main character's in sixth grade and jumping off a school bus in the middle of nowhere and running into the woods is not a sensible thing to do, right? you wouldn't do it. Um, your parents and teachers would tell you not to do it. Um, and so I had to build up the first half of the book to get both Olivia, the main character, and the reader 
to a place where it seemed logical for her to do that. And I used, um, I used a literary device called foreshadowing, which means you try to telegraph things that might happen to the reader without actually saying so. Um, for example, Graves, um, Ollie sees them, Ollie finds an old book, which gives her strange warnings. And most importantly, she has this watch. Um, she has this watch that's broken and it belonged to her mother, who she lost. Um, and the watch, which is broken, comes to life and starts giving her creepy messages too. Um, and, and the watch is, is funny because um, originally it was just a plot device. I had it in the first draft of the book. Um, and it was only to give creepy warnings in order to make Ollie leave the bus, which is important for plot. But afterwards I realized, this happens often, that the watch had an emotional significance too. Um, in the case of Ollie, it connected her to her mother um, and it made almost, in my opinion, you know, the, the emotional heart of the book. And so, yeah, it's funny because writing is not linear, at least for me. It's a process that's very messy um, and it involves playing with ideas and embracing ideas and working with ideas and having bad ideas. Um, I think that's the other important thing about writing is that writing a book involves trying a bad idea, having it fail and starting over or redoing or reworking. Um, and, and, and keeping going. So those are kind of my two big writing advice pieces, which is don't stop um, and embrace your bad ideas. So I wrote Small Spaces, this, um, this scary book about scarecrows and ghosts and all things fall in Vermont. And then I was like, wow, you know what else is scary in Vermont? Winter, in a different way. Winter is, is dark and it's cold. Um, it's dark and it's cold and it's um, long. And so I was like, wow, what if, what if, what if in the winter um, I wrote a different scary book with the same characters in the same place? And that's how Dead Voices was born. Um, Dead Voices set in the winter in Vermont. And then I was like, wow, if I did fall and winter, I could do spring and summer and have a, have a quartet. So that's what I did, or am doing. I have one more left. Um, so Dead Voices, I was like, what, what's the scariest thing about winter? And I was thinking about it. And there were two sort of things that, that, I, that I thought of. Um, the first is near my house, there's a mountain, it's a ski mountain. Um, and it used to be a ski lodge with like regular trails and buildings, but it's gone, it's dead. Um, the people are out of business. And so the ski lodge is abandoned. Um, it's empty, it's like a ruin. Um, people sometimes go just to walk around and it's very creepy. And I was like, wow, this sort of old small mountain, this old small lodge are pretty scary. Um, that was my first thought. And the second thought was there, were, there was, a news article around this time about an orphanage um, in Burlington, Vermont, um, where some terrible things had gone on back in the 80s. Um, terrible things, there were murders, um, and it all came to light several years later. And I was thinking about scary orphanages and also about scary ski lodges, um, and the two ideas combined, and I was like, wow, what if there was a ski lodge that used to be an orphanage? Um, so I had my scary thing. I think it's important for a horror novel, for a scary book to have your, your scary piece first. Um, so you know what your villain, your antagonist, or your, your frightening bit is. Um, and with that book, I had my characters. I was gonna do the same, the same cast as in Small Spaces. Um, but in the case of Dead Voices, the atmosphere was different. And the characters having already had one scary experience were more, were more they knew more. So the things that could or would scare them were different. Um, but the same kind of process held true. I, I took everything that I find creepy about, about winter, about, about um, old buildings in winter. So darkness, power going out, um, long corridors, um, darkness, being snowed in. Um, and I tried my best to, to bring all those things into, into Dead Voices, um, the second book in the series. I think what other good facts about Dead Voices. Um, I, in my, in my first draft, it was quite different. I tried, I tried to, um, actually have skiing in the book. I love to ski, but, um, but I realized that what I wanted was to have a sense of, of being shut in, of being claustrophobic, um, and being sort of stuck in the dark. And that's the, the atmosphere I ended up going with, um, in, in Dead Voices. Um, the character of Gabriel, 
in that book is named after a dear friend of mine who wanted to be one of my books. And I was like, you're going to be kind of evil. And he was like, that's okay. Um, so I put, I put Gabriel Wilson um, in the book for a friend of mine. And then um, I think with the, the, the other one was like the taxidermy um, was something that I was, that I was proud of. There's a, um, there was a, a friend of mine um, got, got married in Maine and they rented an, an Airbnb. And when they got there, they found that the entire house was full of taxidermy. There was, there was taxidermy deer and bears and pheasants and a fawn in a box um, and just like everywhere, all over the house. And it was a little bit creepy. Um, and I was like, wow, what if, what if you're in a lodge, a ski lodge, it's late at night, it's snowing, it's dark. And what if the taxidermy animals start moving? Um, those are some of my, some of my sort of ideas that, that um, went into dead voices. But again, it's not a linear process. It's a process that involves spitballing and writing short outlines and changing them and doing it again and um, sort of putting one scene together with another and, and seeing what, what comes out. Um, for the third book, which you haven't read, but will be out in August, um, set in the spring. And um, I'm excited about it, it's a monster book. And then the fourth book, um, the summer book is, is set in um, right back in the town of Evansburg and is called Empty Smiles. Um, so small spaces, dead voices, dark waters, empty smiles are the, are the, um, are the four books in the series. And I hope to do more, more standalones. I love writing scary books. Um, it's, it's really fun. It's, it's really enjoyable. And um, I have a lot of ideas. I've thought about puppets. I've thought about ghosts. I've thought about, <laughs> I've thought about the, the, the skeleton and the science lab coming to life. So it's, it's, there's no shortage of, of cool topics. And it's a great, a great way to think about sort of what it was like to be 11, sort of the mundane things and the scary things and, and put them together. So, so I, I, I really love it. Um, I would love to take some questions um, if you guys have any. Um, I feel like that's kind of the, the history and the vibe of my, of my two books. Um, and I can just jump on the Q&A perhaps and, um, and just just take them or I can listen to questions that are, that are read aloud one or the other. Um, yes, we do have one by Envika. She wants to know, why did you become a writer? Ooh, that's a good question. Like, and then Erica also asked, did anyone inspire you to become an author? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why, <laughs> why did I become a writer? Um, it's funny because it wasn't my original goal. Um, goals change, I think, as you grow up. That's really important to notice. Um, I always love stories. I love to read. Um, but my my original goal when I was um, when I was finishing college was to be an interpreter for somebody who speaks different languages um, and helps people understand each other. Um, but before I went to graduate school to do that, I decided to write a book just to see if I could. I, it was um, it was not a not a focused process, but. Um, but I, I started and I really enjoyed, the, I enjoyed writing. I, I loved it. And I, um, I finished my first book and I was like, wow, what if, what if I published this? And I got a, a contract for it. And I was like, okay, I could do this. And I wrote, I wrote a second book and a third book. And then now I'm six books in and <laughs> might never end up at graduate school. Um, so I think, I guess the moral there is it's important to let life surprise you. Um, and to, and that the things that are most important to you might not be the things that, you expect. So. And did you get any inspiration? Um, that was the question from Erica. Did anyone inspire you to become an author? Oh, um, well, I mean, every writer that I have read, I feel inspired me in some way. Like when I was growing up, my favorite writer was an author named Robin McKinley, um, who wrote these wonderful fantasy novels. Um, sort of an older, older now, she wrote in the 80s, but um, it was, they were so, so good. And I, I loved Goosebumps. I was a big Earl Stein fan. Um, I loved Mary Downing Hahn, um, writes amazing, scary books. Um, I loved Tamar Pierce as well. So there's been a lot of horror and fantasy when I was, when I was younger. And um, definitely I, I was thinking about those influences when I wrote my first book, which is also a book based on a fairy tale like, like Robin McKinley does. 
And then I wrote horror for young readers like R.L. Stein does. So I think those original authors were huge, huge influences on me as a writer. Um, we have another question. Um, uh, what is your favorite children's book other than yours? <laughs> Oh, that's a good question. I, there's so many great ones. Um, for an older book, like I said, um, my, my favorite book growing up was The Hero and the Crown by Robin McKinley. Um, but for a newer book, let's see. I love The Night Gardener by Jonathan Oxier. Um, it's a book that I super love recently. Um, also Doll Bones by Holly Black is great. Um, I just read, um, oh, what was it called? I just read, oh, The Girl Who Drank the Moon and I loved it. Um, there's so many, there's so many great, great books that are being written now, um, more than I can list, but yeah, so many great books. We have another question. Um, is there a movie for dead voices in small spaces? If no, are they planning to make one? Um, there is not a movie. Um, so right now Netflix has bought the option to make a movie, which is not the same as making a movie. Um, what happens is a film company Buys, it's called an option, which means they have a certain period of time to begin to make the movie. And they can decide either to go through with it or not. Um, and if they don't, the option comes back to you and you can, you can sell it again. Um, and so right now Netflix has it and um, we'll see what happens. Like you never know. Um, it's important to just like let the process ride a little bit. Um, let's see, we have character questions. Um, are there any of the characters in Small Spaces and Dead Voices based off of you or someone you know? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I feel like well, every character you write has a little bit of you in there because you wrote them. Um, but in, in Small Spaces, the character of Ollie's dad, which is very specific, but it's, it's based on my best friend from college who was also very much like that. He loves to knit. Um, he's very, he's a great cook. Um, just a really fun, fun person. I was like, I'm putting you in a book. And he's like, really? Okay. <laughs> We've been friends a really long time. Um, and you're giving me a kid? He doesn't have any kids yet, but he's hoping this year is the year. So um, I said he has to name her Ollie. Um, so we're having a debate about that right now. Um, and then my other friend, um, his name is Garrett, but his middle name is Gabriel, wanted to be in a book. And so I, I put him in as a villainous character in Dead Voices. So there's some friends in there. Um, a lot of times it's just um, sort of pieces of people um, are in characters or sometimes often a character, their personality comes from um, what the plot needs for them. Like in the case of Ollie, for example, in both books, um, especially in small spaces, I knew that she had to get off that bus, right? It's, it's, it's so important. And I was like, what kind of kid, what kind of sixth grader would be willing to jump off a school bus in the woods? And then the answer was, a stubborn character, a brave character, kind of a character who marches to her own beat too. Um, and that was the only kind of personality that could make that scene work. And so that was when Ollie's like, the character was formed, the plot made her do it. That often happens too, so. Um, Noah asks if Seth is based off of anyone, uh, since we're talking about characters. <laughs> Seth is not based off anyone. I feel like, I like the idea of somebody who, how a smile can be both creepy and not. Like, it just depends on the kind of smile. Um, and I like the idea of a character who you weren't sure if they were good or bad until the end. Um, I was also, I guess, inspired by kind of the old story of like the Faustian bargain, the, the person who wants something so badly and what would you give up to get it? Um, and then the name, the name Seth is, it's actually this true. The name Seth comes from a, an Egyptian god, Set, who is the underworld god um, who, kills his brother Osiris every year. So it was a little bit of a call out to like, I mean, not evil, but like darkness. Um, there's also a question, is there Dark Waters, is the book Dark Waters going to have the same characters? Yes, the book Dark Waters are the same, and, and a new character actually, um, but the same characters and a new scary thing. Okay. Um, when did you start writing books is another question that we have. When did I start writing books? Oh my gosh, 10 years ago, it was 2011. Um, and I just finished college and I, I wrote my first novel that summer and um, didn't get published until 2017. So I've been publishing books for about four years, but writing them for 10. And um, which book out of the four that we know, um, did you enjoy writing the most? Which book? I let's see. I loved writing Small Spaces. It was so fun. It was a very smooth process. Um, I, I scared myself often. 
Um, it was just very enjoyable to write. Um, I'm enjoying the fourth book. I'm doing it now. It's called Empty Smiles. Um, and it's it's got the sort of, for me, the creepiest thing so far. And so I'm, I'm enjoying creeping myself out while writing it. Um, we also have the question of why did you decide to write scary stories? That's a good question. Why did I decide? I mean, I guess I had this idea about scarecrows, right? And so I decided to do it. And I, I discovered that I enjoyed writing scary books and I kept at it. Um, so there wasn't really a, like a, a conscious decision, um, but I enjoy writing kids horror in part because it's a wonderful challenge as a writer because you have to, you want to make it scary, but there's things you can't do in, in a book, in a book for young people, right? You've got to keep it atmospheric horror. Um, it's got to be creepy and spooky, um, less severed heads, you know, it's just not how the, the genre works. And so as a writer, it's fun to create this like sense of dread, um, for a reader. And I, I really enjoy that challenge. Um, we also have the question, how long does it take to write the books with such good detail? Ooh, how long does it take? The answer is it varies wildly um, from book to book. Small Spaces, the first draft of Small Spaces, which was the middle of the book to the end, I wrote it in two weeks. It was very quick. Wow. Um, but then finishing the book, writing it, like the whole thing, took about eight months. Um, and so I think the moral there is that drafting a book is often faster than editing the book, but editing the book is where it becomes good. Um, so good writing is in rewriting. And I think that's true for every kind of writing. Um, you never do a perfect or even a good job the first time. And that's true of every book I've ever heard of. So it's important to like, again, keep at it. Um, somebody has a question that uh, it says, I am working on writing a story. Do you have any advice on how to start it? Yeah, of course. Um, when you're starting a story, I think the one important thing is to, is to just go, like, don't overthink it too much. Like just start making sentences, you know? Um, I think overthinking can be paralyzing. And oftentimes what I'll do is I'll start writing, get a sense of like the world I'm in and then do an outline or a quick series of notes when I'm a few thousand words in to the story. Um, I think anything can start a story. It can be a character, it can be a phrase, it can be another story that inspired you. It can be a person you know, a person you've heard of, history, um, a book, a movie, anything can be inspiration for a story. Um, and there's no right or wrong way to do it. So if you think the most exciting scenes in the end, but you want to write that scene first, do it. Just write that scene first, you know? You don't have to start at the beginning. You don't have to end with the end. Like it can evolve and change as you go um, a lot. So, so I think it's important to be flexible and enjoy what you're doing instead of being like, it has to be good the first time because stories never are. They have to be edited. They have to be worked on. Um, so. We have uh, a question here. It says, I'm not sure if you answered this already, but how old were you when you wrote your first book and which book was your first? I was 23 when I wrote my first book and it was an adult book. It was a book for grownups called The Bear and the Nightingale. Um, so I'd written two books for adults. Um, my first book, then a sequel to it um, when I wrote Small Spaces. So that was my third book, Small Spaces. And I've written three books for adults and three for kids. Um, there's another question here. Um, after you've published your first book, how do you think your writing, writing process has changed? Oh man, I try to be more organized now. Um, I, it's important to like sort of have at least some sense of how you're getting it done so you can meet your deadlines, um, which is important. In your first book, it's nice because you have no expectations and no deadlines at all. But now doing it as a career, it's like you have to finish this by, you know, two months, three months from now kind of thing. So it makes you be more organized. Um, another question we have here is, what is one of your favorite books that you have made? What is one of my favorite books that I have made? I, I loved writing Small Spaces. I've said this before, but it was just, it was a fun book to write and it's been fun. It was a fun adventure in a new genre for me. And it's been fun seeing people enjoy it, people dressing as scarecrows, making dioramas, making, somebody made a Christmas tree of Small Spaces. Like it's just, it's been a book that's had a lot of um, a lot of good reactions from people, and it was one that was was fun. It was fun from start to finish. So I have very very fond memories of writing small spaces. 
Another question we have here is, what's a book that you love so much that you can't wait until another book comes out to make a series? So I think, I think they're really Ooh, great. Let's see, what are some books that I just love them and want the whole series? Um, oh boy, I mean, back in the day, it was obviously Rick Riordan. I would, I would wait for every single one of those books and read them as soon as possible. Um, and that was, that was a huge thing. More, let's see, a more recent series. Um, the series is called Dragon Mountain. It's got, has, I think it has two books out. Um, and I'm waiting on the third very excitedly at the moment. Um, so that's, that's a great series. What other ones? Yeah, I think those are my two that I've really waited for, hopefully. Um, the next question we have here is, what is the most difficult part about your artistic process? Um, what is the most difficult part? It can be unpredictable, I think. Um, I, I sometimes it's very fluid, which can be a strength at times, but oftentimes I'm like, wow, I've got to be finished by three weeks from now. And the process is very unpredictable. It might be very fast or kind of slow. So um, I wish it was more predictable for sure. Um, typically, how much time do you spend writing a day? Um, usually I'll do sessions of half an hour. Um, and if I'm drafting a book, I'll do no more than six of those. So it's three hours of drafting. Um, there's a lot of like admin work to do as well, but um, I think after after three hours of drafting, you're pretty tired. That's usually three or four thousand words. So, uh, what characters are you like the most personality wise, or act the most like? Ooh, okay. I guess I'm like Coco more than any other character. Um, I'm like more quiet, and I I do love to be outside and do like sports, but I'm also like pretty pretty chill, introverted. Um, I don't draw, but I like to play the piano um is kind of my my thing so I, I I like Coco she um her personality is her own but she looks like a friend of mine um who was who was had was born with pink hair um it was the weirdest thing she had red hair that was blonde and therefore it looks pink um and people would just stop her on the street all the time and be like what what is your hair um so I wanted that the pink hair immortalized in a character uh, we have another question of, would you like Dead Voices, the Dead Voices series to be made into graphic novels? I would love it if any of my books were graphic novels. I think graphic novels are the best. Um, I love them. Um, so maybe one day that'd be great. I, I think scary graphic novels are super fun. Uh, somebody says, I see a chart of sticky notes. What's it for? <laughs> Ooh, my sticky notes. Um, it's kind of my like my organizing pin board. I have different projects um, on the sticky notes. Um, purple are adult books and green are kids books. Uh, what kinds of activities, clubs, sports uh, did you participate in when you were in school? I was in school, let's see. I liked sports a lot. I ran cross country um, in high school and I played lacrosse, um, which was really fun. When I was in college, I joined the horseback riding team um, which was fun because we traveled around and like every college would like give up their horses to, like you to ride um, at the competition and it was really really fun and communal. Um, now that I'm an adult I like to ski. Um, I live near five different ski mountains. I live in the mountains so um, a lot of skiing happens. Um, when I was a kid I loved to read too. Read and write. Um, I see board games. Pretty <laughs> boring I guess actually languages I joined like French club and like debate club too I guess uh, somebody wants to know when you are stuck on writing on writing an area of a book what do you do um if you're stuck you can do a couple of things you can stop and put it away and go for a walk which helps um you can write a different part of the book um that's unrelated to your being stuck and come back to your stuck part um you can go back to your outline and try to see what what the problem is um, or you can do a different project and like wait for a day and see if it comes back to you. There are many options for being stuck. I think one thing I would say is that it's important to finish what you start because starting a book is the easy part um, or starting a story is easy. Um, and the hard part is finishing it. It's like if you're, you're a juggler, anybody can throw six oranges into the air. The trick is catching all six. Um, and so starting your book or story is like throwing your six oranges into the air and finishing it's like catching all six. And so you learn a lot more from the catching than you from the throwing. And so it's important to learn to finish what you start. Uh, we have another question of what genre of books do you like the most? 
Oh, that's a great question. What do I love the most? I love um, fantasy and I love horror and I love historical fantasy and historical fiction also too are my, probably my favorites. Um, as he, I read some contemporary fiction as well. Um, and definitely I love like all middle grade, but especially fantasy. Um, and like I said, core are great. Somebody else wants to know what's your favorite food and color? My favorite color is purple. Um, and my favorite food is probably apple pie. Um, somebody says, uh, I truly love your books. You inspire me as a young writer myself. My question is, what do you think is the most unique trait about your writing? That's a good question. I've been asked that before. What is the most unique? Oh boy, it's hard to say. Um, um, I feel like I am good at creating and sustaining atmosphere. Um, that's something that people have mentioned in all the books that I've written. Um, and it's something that I have enjoyed, especially exercising in sort of a horror setting. And I'm proud of it as a writer. So I guess the atmosphere is something that's um, a strength of mine as a writer. <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, we have another question. Do you like editing your books? I do like editing. I like editing more than drafting because um, like, Drafting is fun and it's exciting, but editing is where you get your hands dirty and really try to finish your book and get it good. And like editing is not just fixing a comma. Editing is like taking out whole huge sections, adding whole sections, adding characters, taking out characters. Um, editing means pulling it apart. Um, and I think that's something that people sometimes mistake. They think like, oh, editing is just like, I'm going to put a comma here and like a period there and fix this typo and I'm done. And that's not editing. Editing is like you go in and dig and try to make the story or book or piece of paper better. Um, and it takes a long time. I know you mentioned that you were inspired by Vermont. Uh, we do have the question that says, did you get your ideas for your books by things that you saw around you? That's a great question too. Um, for small spaces, I definitely did. Cause like, again, it was fall in Vermont and I had these things around me. I had corn mazes and I had scarecrows and I had fog and I had drippy trees and cemeteries. They were all right there. Um, and same with the winter book. I had this sort of creepy, abandoned ski area um, nearby. And then there was these news clippings from the local paper about this like orphanage that was horrible in Burlington. Um, and these things were all kind of in my life and they, they came together to, to make the book. Um, our next question here says, did you get bullied when you were younger? Um, I got bullied last year and was wondering if you had a story about it to inspire others. Oh goodness. I'm, first of all, I'm so sorry. And um, bullying is never okay, ever. Um, for me personally, I think, I remember one day um, when I was in sixth grade and I was, I was new, it was a new school. Um, and I didn't know anybody and I was very shy. And I sat down um, for lunch at an empty table and no one came to sit with me. And I was sitting by my, I was the only student in the whole cafeteria who was sitting by myself. And it was the scariest thing ever ever, ever, ever. And I remember um, um, a girl got up, her name was Jennifer, and she went over and sat with me. Um, and I could see everyone just like staring. And she was like, hey, I'm Jennifer. And she was just so nice. And I guess it's not bullying when people don't want to sit with you, but it doesn't feel good either. And um, the fact that one kind person reached out, like it still makes me tear up like 20 years later. Um, and so I guess the moral is, is, is reach out, you know, even when everyone's staring and you might change someone's life. That helps. Hugs. That's a great message. Um, somebody wants to know what character from Small Spaces or Dead Voices was your favorite? Ooh, what character? I love writing Ollie's dad in part because I'm like, like when I, when I need a joke, I text my friend who loves terrible jokes. I'm like, dude, what would your dad character say? And he's like, have I got a joke for you? And I'll be like, perfect, it's awful. Um, so it's always fun to, to write him. Um, I love Coco. She, she, she speaks to me. She's strong. She's, she's quiet. Um, she's really smart. I, I just, I feel like she's an idealized version of what I would like to be at 11. And um, I love writing her for that reason. Our next question says, what do you do other than writing in your time? Ooh, what do I do? I like to garden. Um, I don't know, I guess I could turn, I have my, I have a gardenia who I am, oh, come on, can the camera see it? Not quite, oh, there it is. Um, 
and I've been growing this gardenia indoors um, and it takes, I have a humidifier for it and a grow light and like I have to be fertilized like every like twice a month and it's just the most like persnickety flower. Um, but it has, it has like six or seven buds on it right now. So I'm very excited to have the gardenia bloom and they smell so good when they bloom. So I, my fingers are crossed. Um, I love to garden. We have a garden, we have huge perennial beds outside and we have a vegetable garden. Um, so gardening is a big thing, especially in the summertime. Um, I like to ski in the winter. I mentioned we have a bunch of different ski areas near our house. So um, I usually ski a couple times a week. Um, and yeah, I have adventures outside. It's kind of my main main things. Uh, somebody wants to know, do you ever get frustrated when you write, uh, like what, it, what is the most difficult part about writing a book? Oh man, writing a book never gets easier is the thing. You think like, I've got it this time. I have, I know what I'm doing. But books surprise you, and sometimes you think it'll work and it doesn't. And sometimes the thing you thought would work or wouldn't work does. And um, it's just you, you, every everyone's a new adventure, and that's a great thing and a terrible thing because some days you're like, I wish I could just do this for eight hours, I have to be predictable. Um, and some days you're like, I'm on an adventure. Um, so some days I'm like, I wish writing was a more predictable career path and I'm like, no, I want the adventure. So you go back and forth, um, but it's never easy. Our next question says, when you're done writing a book, do you immediately start another book? That's a good question too. I usually have several books going at once because I have contracts for adult books as well as kid books. Um, plus I have some books that I just want to write um, that aren't either. So usually I, I will be writing two or three at the same time. And then when one gets close to being finished, I'll sprint on it until it's done. And then switch the other, so it ends up being this kind of like 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 steps, like 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 not everything's. There's always something happening. Um, what advice do you give to young authors that want to write horror books too? Ooh, well, like for any author, I'd say read a lot. Um, read widely. Don't just read horror. Read in every genre. Um, like and and consume stories too. Like watch movies and TV shows. Like again, widely. Um, I would say also read history and read read current events because like there'll often be things in there that will inspire you. Um, plenty of scary books are based on a historical event. Um, like my orphanage, for example, really existed in, in Dead Voices. Um, and then and then just just finish what you start. Um, it's very important. Think about what scares you and why. Um, not just what, but the why. Like, why is a scarecrow scary? Why is a ghost scary? Why is a cemetery scary? Um, and ask yourself how you recreate that sense of like creepiness for others. Um, that's helpful too. Our next question says, if you could tell anything to your younger self, what would it be? Oh, great question. Um, be patient, don't give up. Our next question says, is, what is your favorite Goosebumps story? Oh, that's a great question. Um, let's see. One of my favorites as a kid was Welcome to Horrorland, um, which is kind of random, but I love the idea of like a carnival or a theme park that was like horrifying. Um, I like the slappy ones because this, it was the first one, Night of Living Dummy, I think was the first one. And it's just, the pictures on the cover just like of this like like dummy just like sitting there were, all, were terrible um what are some other ones there's so many and they're all so fun um i think welcome to camp jelly jam was one that i was like wow when i was a kid um so yeah so many good goosebumps books the last question that we have here is how old were you when you wrote dead voices how old was i when i wrote dead voices i was oh um hold my now I was 29. A couple years ago. That completes our Q&A. Thank you everyone for um, writing uh, questions. I think we're gonna turn on our cameras, all the panelists here now.
Um, so thank you all for attending. You guys all had some excellent questions. And thank you, Catherine, for joining us today. Um, as we celebrate the 47th year of Battle of the Books, it's sort of amazing that this program has gone on for so long. Um, we will be having our 48th year next year. Um, so make sure you will have your um, book lists uh, sent to your coaches. So if you're in Battle of the Books, uh, be on the lookout for that from your coach. You can start reading that now. Um, and yeah, we're just so excited uh, that you were able to join us. Thank you, Catherine. Um, and congratulations to all of the uh, Battle of the Books participants. Your work this year was amazing. Um, getting through 60 titles and six rounds. Um, you have really shown us uh, some, some great dedication to reading. and um, It's such a joy um, to be a part of this program and help facilitating it um, for you all. So thank you. And thank you, Catherine, for joining us today. Thank you guys so much. It was, it was an honor to be here and um, good luck with next year. Thanks. Read more Bye. books. Take care. Bye. <laughs> Bye.